stupid. So I, I, that's not in my strategy. Um, the other one is like, and part of mine is like, oh, I'm gonna build up this botnet. Uh, and so it's like, well, why don't I just pay off some criminal who already has a botnet and uh, use his, right? Save, save some time or whatever. And so I say for that, I, I don't go for that either because A, they're criminals, so you can't really trust them. And B, uh, there's, uh, oh, there was another one, I swear, but I can't think of it. Anyway, uh, so, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I guess it's only just, they're, they're, you know, you, you just can't deal with those guys. And, and they're, you know, they're, not only can you not trust that they're not just gonna take it back or do something else, but, but you wanna keep it sort of secret, right? You don't wanna be telling all these guys. Um, the other thing is you could have like, you know, pay a Microsoft employee 50 grand to go put a bug in, in uh, or a backdoor in some, some IE code or something, or Cisco or whatever. So uh, you could do that and it would be, it'd be easier, but again, you kinda have to worry about that getting out at some point. Okay, next. <laughs> you can see I was like having fun with Photoshop one day. Um, so, uh, and I'm not, I'm not actually that good at it either. So, so what's my, uh, what, what sort of things do I see uh, attack? So, so like first off, like you know, I'm just, I'm doing whatever Kim Jong Il tells me to do at this point, right? And uh, I don't really know what his plans are. He's, he's not like totally like right in the mind. So uh, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to prepare for everything you could possibly ask for. And then I'm, you know, when you tell me to do it, I'll just hopefully already have that in place to do it. So, so what are some like crazy things that he might come up with? You know, hey Charlie, uh, I want you to shut down the internet. It's like, well, you know, I'll do my best. Uh, I mean, I'm no Dan Kaminsky. So, uh, so other things I might do is financial markets, you know, air transportation, power stuff. Um, you know, maybe d break up the communication in the military. Uh, you know, cell phone networks. This is like really easy to do because I haven't been able to use my phone in like a week here in Las Vegas. <laughs> okay, next up, uh, tasks. So these are the actual things that uh, I. So, so, so the the last the last bit was what he might want me to do, and this is the things I'm going to prepare to do, and hopefully these things will allow me to do the things he wants me to do. And uh, yeah, everyone loves my book there in North Korea. Okay, so, so these are the things I want to do. Communication redundancy. So I want to make sure that if parts of the internet go away, uh, that I can still, uh, you know, do my job, which is to destroy other, the U.S. capitalist pigs. Okay, distributed denial of service. I want to be able to get into like really hard targets, like military networks. Uh, I want to take down core infrastructure, and uh, then there's these like air gap networks I'm going to talk about and how I would attack those. Okay, so, so I mentioned this uh, already. So I want to have redundant communication to all these computers that, that I'm, I'm launching my attack from throughout the world. Um, so the idea is that uh, the people, so not, not just the, the computers, but I want to have people like stationed throughout the world too, right? Uh, so if I, I don't want to have like all my, my cyber army like holed up in a, in a bunker in North Korea, right? Because then all you got to do is, you know, snip the cables going into North Korea. There's probably like two and I'm going to be shut out. So I want to have like people, you know, all over the world, and in this case, I'm attacking the U.S. So like have them all over the U.S. as well, um, and, and likewise, I want to have communication to those people and to like other, you know, computers that I own through lots of different ways. So instead of, you know, so I'm assuming the internet at some point is going to be difficult to use when I'm doing all these things. Uh, so I want to have like be able to talk over the phone lines, over like satellite phones, you know, anything I can think of. The idea is even if the internet like somehow like became completely unusable, I could still communicate with, with these computers to continue the attack or, or you know, I could actually stop the attack if I wanted to. Okay, so what next? Uh, well, you know, this is like, I really even hate to bring it up because it's so like anti, it's so dirty, right, and, and messy, but you know, the great leader says he might want it, so I need, I need to be prepared. So denial of service, so you know, you flood too much traffic. Um, and, and the point to make here is like if, if the internet would go away or if, you know, Google went away or, or, you know, Gmail or whatever, like North Korea is just fine with that. Like the, the, the average person in North Korea could care less if the internet is functioning or not. Where like other countries might have to actually worry about this. But I don't. Okay, and then, uh, you know, how am I going to get this botnet? Well, basically I'm going to just use, you know, a crap load of, I mean, basically the, how the bad guys do it. And, and, and the idea to me is like, man, if these bad guys are, you know, they're, I'm not saying they're not smart. But uh, you know they're not. They can't be that organized. They you know they can't be more than a handful of people, I would guess, uh, doing you know one, you know a particular botnet. And I'm gonna have if you, when you see my sites like hundreds of people, and, you know, trained people like with like management and stuff. So I don't see why any reason I can't make like way huger botnets than they can. So so the idea is uh, just collect a bunch of boxes, make sure that no one else is on them, clean them up as much as you can, and move on. 
And uh, for this task, I'm not gonna use any zero days because obviously when you look at the size of botnets, you don't have to. Um, so, so what else do I wanna worry about as far as the North Korean botnets? Um, so, so, so I wanna make sure that I use different botnet software for different botnets. Uh, I wanna have them make sure they're, they're uh, you know, the same thing that normal botnets have so they're not centrally controlled. So you can't just like take out one, one computer and then all of a sudden I can't communicate with my botnets. I wanna make sure they're all over the, all over the world. Uh, so again, if you like snip off communications to one country, it doesn't really affect it. And all over the, the, the target country too. So like even if the target country uh, you know, disconnects itself from the internet or from parts of, the, parts of it from the internet, and I can still keep doing my denial of service. And the idea is to make it just humongous, like 100 times bigger than anyone we've seen so far. This is just a picture to show uh, like the diversity of what I'm talking about. So even in the US, I have like, you know, however many, seven different botnets, like all different code, all different communications. Um, so if you take out one of those colors, you, you can't, it doesn't really affect the overall um, picture of things. And they're, you know, throughout the world and the country. All right, and then there's gonna be these, you know, hard targets, like, you know, he's, you know, Kim Jong-un is gonna roll in one day and I'm, you know, happily typing away. And he's gonna be like, yeah, Charlie, I need to get into, you know, Wall Street computers, do it. Uh, I need to get into, you know, uh, you know, NSA's top secret network. And I'll be like, okay. So, uh, how, so, so, so these are hard, right? Um, and the idea is, uh, the, the way I differentiate a hard target from like, you know, an easy target, is that they actually have a security team, they actually have, uh, uh, you know, dedicated security devices and, and that sort of thing, and that's what makes it hard. But if you look at botnets and, uh, you know, how big they are and, and the sorts of nodes they have, there, there might not actually be a hard target. Like there's, there's, you know, computers that are owned like all over and, and all companies and stuff. But uh, still, I imagine there'll be some that'll be harder than others to get into. So, so the way I do this, I'm not gonna go spend too much time on this, but the idea is, is this basic like pen testing. Uh, you just take your time, do research, uh, you know, gain trust, get in somewhere, and then uh, spread your, your, your control. So this is, uh, you know, the so-called apt, right? I, except I just do it uh, in a very advanced way. So this is like some, here's me spreading throughout, uh, this was like way cooler to NATO than you guys, but um, <laughs> this is like spreading throughout uh, a, a corporate network. So the only thing that's cool about this is it's, it's like the Cisco safe diagram, so this, that, was, that was a secure, secure network, right? But like, you, obviously, you can still break into it. Um, so uh, then what, what's next? So, uh, you know, like I said, Dan already coined that he broke the internet with DNS, so I gotta be able to do something to DNS. Uh, the other things I'm gonna care about is like core routers. So uh, what am I gonna do to, to like DNS servers and core routers? Uh, denial of service is one option. Uh, you know, there's like, specific attacks against, you know, poison routing tables. So this is like happened accidentally, so I'm gonna do it on purpose. And then uh, you can do the hard target approach, so I find out, you know, who's the admin of this particular core router, and I break into his computer or his like sister's computer or whatever, and you know, slowly trace it back to figure out, you know, what he does. And then of course, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I consider myself a, like a bug finder, right? That's, that's my, my specialty, and so, so this part is like really exciting to me. It's like, oh, I, I get to have all these like really smart guys looking for bugs, and I'll, instead of looking at, in, you know, reader all the time, I'll be looking in like, you know, Cisco iOS, although I don't know if they call that anymore because like iPhone bought that or something. Uh, Juniper stuff, like in, in the bind implementation and, and Microsoft uh, DNS. And the thing that, that's really exciting about this is you don't actually necessarily have to control this, right, and take it over. It's, it's good enough to just find a denial of service, which is usually like pretty easy to find. So if I can just keep crashing like a core router, that's pretty, pretty good if I wanna, you know, make things hard. All right, so I talked about these air gap systems earlier. Um, so what is it? So if you have like a really, if you really wanna have a, a secure network, so like, you know, a nuclear power plant or something, right? You don't necessarily want this thing plugged in the internet because you don't want some guy in, uh, you know, Yugoslavia attacking you or something. So uh, the way you do that is you just, you just make sure you're not plugged in the internet, right? Uh, and then you don't have to worry about that. And so examples of this is like, you know, some top secret network, electrical grids, that sort of thing. Um, the idea is that, you know, it's not impossible to attack this, it's just a lot harder. And the example is this, this uh, military network called uh, JWIX was compromised because someone plugged a, a compromised USB stick into it. So, so there's ways to get into these and I'll talk about um, my approach. So I, I know there's a, there was an approach in, in the past that talked about having malware that would sort of like save up information and then is wait, 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 and then if ever it saw it was on the internet it would hurry up and like punch it all out. But that's not the approach I take. So the approach I take is to try to put these systems back on the internet. 
Um, and, and, and this is going to take people, right? It's not, you can't, my plan isn't all just sitting around with computers. It's going to take people out doing stuff. So the idea is you have to get someone inside this network like physically somehow. So uh, I'm going to have these like North Koreans or maybe I, you know, my sleeper cell, uh, you know, people in college in the U.S. or something, you know, join these companies or pay off people, pay off a janitor, whatever. Uh, and so I get them into this network and I start plugging in devices into, to, to, you know, their computer. So maybe, uh, you know, modems to, to, to dial out over the phone line or some, you know, some other way. But the idea is to just get, get a way that I can start to remotely attack this, this, this network that is not supposed to have internet access. And I've had people come up to me about this and be like, oh, that's impossible. I am minister of network and I know as soon as someone plugs in a USB stick in any computer. And I'm like, well, you know, that, that's bullshit, right? If, if I walk, if I have, if you give me like unlimited physical access to your network, I'm eventually going to be able to have a way that I'm going to have, you know, a computer or a device on your network and you're not going to know about it. So uh, anyway, it's just a matter, I think, of time and, and you know, effort to, to, to do that. All right, so it's so the defenses. I laugh at defenses. We all, we all had a good laugh about this. <laughs> all right, so, so, so what are the things that, that a target country could do uh, to, to try to, to stop this, this attack, right? They're like, oh shit, Charlie Miller is working for the Koreans. We got to like figure out what we're going to do. So, um, so some, some ideas I've already sort of mentioned is uh, you could try to segregate yourself. So, uh, the U.S. might not be able to do this so easily, but like a smaller country like South Korea, which would also be a, a favorite target of, of the great leader, uh, they could just say like, screw you guys, we're just going to be our own internet for a while. Um, the other thing is you could try to, you know, put out IDSs and, and try to catch us. Uh, you could do like, uh, you know, typical Akamai anti-DOS stuff. And then I already mentioned the air gapping systems. All right, so, uh, so for segregating, uh, you could either like physically cut the wires or you could just put such aggressive filters on, on it that almost nothing gets through. And the way that I get around this is, uh, again, I said I, I've already pre-positioned everything presumably before any of the, you know, this stuff is going down. So uh, yeah, okay, you cut off yourself from the internet, but I still have a bunch of compromised computers on your, your network that, that before it's been cut off. And I can still communicate with them through ways besides the internet so I can still attack you even if you segregate yourself. So thanks, but, but that's not going to work. Uh, the next thing is filtering. So uh, you know, like the U.S. is working on this this so-called Einstein IDS thing, right? So uh, obviously they think that this is a good idea, um, but I, I don't think it's that great. So uh, the uh, the botnet clients that I'm I'm, I'm shipping, their communication, uh, the the uh, the exploits I'm using, these are all custom things. So there won't be uh, specific signatures for them. There might be some generic ones, but as you see, I'm going to test against all the antivirus and stuff that I can get my hands on. So it's going to be really hard with, uh, with a filtering device to, to catch this. And the other thing is, because I'm using one, so I don't just like use the same, you know, one piece of bot code or the same one, uh, you know, rat or whatever. I have lots of different versions of each one that are each uh, different. So if by chance, you know, my guy totally screws up one day and uh, he gets caught, and then they ship this off to all, you know, McAfee and Symantec and all this stuff, and they have signatures and, and all that. So, so it doesn't, it's not like, hey, we caught, we caught this guy at Google, oh, oh crap. We also see that the same thing is being used here, 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 and here, right? So that's not going to happen because I'm going to have so many different versions of, of all my software. All right, what about, uh, you know, in, for the now service case, you know, they really, really want whitehouse.gov to be up. So uh, they, they hire Akamai or they set up their own sort of, sort of system. And so I would say, well, because I have this, this, first of all, I have this enormous botnet. And second of all, it's uh, geographically diverse. So uh, that's the main thing that they use to, to stop you. And so it, it won't actually help you here. And then I already mentioned air gap systems. Uh, well, for one thing, you can't actually air gap every system or else the internet is, like, doesn't exist, right? Um, and the other thing is uh, I already mentioned that I would try to un air gap the ones that, that are air gapped. Okay, so now let's talk about, that's what I want to do and why I think it, it, it will be hard to defend against. So now let's talk about exactly what I think I'm going to need. Do you see me in this picture? It's like a Where's Waldo. I'm on my iPhone in the background. <laughs> I must be in the doghouse at this point. I'm not up by the leader. Okay, so, so these are all the guys I think I'm going to need. I don't know if you can, if you can see it. I'm going to go through each one so, so you don't need to worry about it for now. So these are, these are all the different like job titles. When, so they'll be like, uh, you know, advertising on, on threat posts or something. Hey, seeking, you know, person willing to develop vulnerabilities. All right. And, and then uh, part of this too is, 
So I, I had a conversation with someone about like, how are you going to get these people, right? I, I guess I'll get into this later. So let me just, just talk for now about this. So, so you're going to need people who can find bugs, right? Because you got to have your zero days. 